You have a problem. Stop buying penny stocks. Stop buying micro cap high risk penny stocks. Stop. All right, welcome to the latest subscriber portfolio review. I want to thank the subscriber for sending in his portfolio to me. So what we have here is a $20,000 portfolio that is all in foreign micro cap penny stocks. Yes, you heard that right. There is not a single United States company on this list. As you can see by the diversity breakdown, it's all in either energy or basic materials, which oh, 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 boy, 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 are you going to learn about that here in this video. Now, the intro, of course, was a meme. When I said stop buying penny stocks, I don't actually mean that. This portfolio is similar to the last one, which was 50% crypto, which you can check out here in the description. I pointed out that as crazy as I thought that a portfolio that's 50% cryptocurrency and cryptocurrency companies, it seemed to have worked for that previous subscriber, giving him over 50% gains in just a year. The same thing is true with this insanity of a portfolio. Yes, you have all extremely high risk, exploratory, micro cap penny foreign mining company and energy stocks, but it seems to be working for you. I can't argue with the fact that you've got 50% gains. Most of these positions aren't even a year old. Some of these positions you'll see later are just a few months old, in some cases even a few weeks old. It seems to be working for you. Now let's drill down deeper into this portfolio, pardon the pun, because guess what? This is mostly a mining exploratory portfolio. So this portfolio's biggest winner, and also coincidentally, or non-coincidentally, its biggest market value position, is a company called HE1.L, which I know from already is Helium One Global Limited. We're talking about a $71 million market cap, and we're talking about a market cap that's so small that other companies fluctuate more than this in a day. It's headquartered in Tanzania. Okay, that's interesting. And as the description on Yahoo Finance tells you, it's a company that explores for helium gas, specifically in Tanzania. As it says here too, helium is used in technology, in aerospace, and medical services. If you want to learn more about this, there's a video by Real Life Lore about helium and the shortage that's coming up and how important helium really is to modern technology. It's worth taking a look. But if you want me to cut to the chase and summarize this video, pretty much helium's hard to get your hands on. And over the past century, from being used almost every day to zeppelins and balloons, the supply has been more and more crunched over time. And so finding new sources of helium is increasingly difficult because most helium it just escapes from the earth or escapes from the ground and then goes into space and effectively, to use a very simple term, evaporates. So the only helium on the earth was either trapped after the creation of the solar system or as a property of radioactive decay. So actually finding it and trapping it before it escapes the earth is quite difficult. So the good news is the earth probably won't run out of helium because new helium is produced every single day. But also, too, it's very hard to trap and contain it. There's a lot of speculation that you could get helium negative 3 on the moon, which is another version of helium, and that would solve a lot of these problems. But until the meantime, until we have moon bases, that's pretty much out of the question. So then steps into this subscriber's number one pick, Helium One, which was up 30% the last day alone. And you can see from IPO, this company, extremely risky, we're talking no revenues, has gone from $4 now to $14.30. We're talking more than a 3x. So pretty much this company is a play on a looming helium shortage and trying to find new supplies in Africa. This is a London stock exchange company and going back to the portfolio, can't argue with these returns, but this is just beyond my risk profile. I mean, you sir, you are insane. You are insane. Investing into a micro cap foreign stock exploratory helium company going through rural areas of Tanzania looking for helium. I got to applaud you. I will say this. I'll take a portfolio like this any day over ones recommended by those boring, dull, underperforming, snarky channels. Um, yeah, buying individual stocks, that's never gonna work out, okay? Uh, look, I've read the stats, I've read the statistics. You can never beat an ETF, you can never beat the S&P 500, so don't bother investing in anything different, okay? Look at this study by Simon et al. in 2009, and, um, look, uh, you know, with the financial crisis, nobody invested in individual stocks, ever beat an ETF, so... Um, I just got my 6% per year, and, uh, you know, I know my portfolio is not as big as anybody else around here, but you're wasting your time on individual stocks. I'll take this insanity. I think you have a problem, by the way. I, st I think you have a problem being this insane and this concentrated. But I will take this any day over someone else talking about investing, saying, you can never pick a stock. You'll never get it right. You don't know. You can't get it right. Just buy an ETF. I think uh, buying ETF drains the IQ out of people picking stocks and making trades. And I think ETFs are overall 
a net negative for price discovery on the stock market. So congratulations to you on this win on this exploratory London Stock Exchange Helium Company. The second largest company in this portfolio, Forum Energy Metals Corporation, a Canadian mining company. Also a penny stock, this subscriber is sitting at over 100% gain. Over time though, I learned that mining was such a difficult business. It's so capital intensive, so regulated. These companies take on huge debt, they often fail. Mining, especially on the public markets, is extremely difficult to get into and also as a company to survive. And I was interested in mining companies right around when they are failing during the early 2010s after the great financial crisis. So I see some parallels here. After I learned that mining doesn't get the same kind of value add, as other companies, I moved on to more down the road away from commodities companies. For example, we know that tech stocks who actually make technology components make more money than the companies that actually mine the raw materials. And that's because when something is extracted from the ground, there's no real value in that until it's turned into a product. So the most value and the most profit is as far away downstream from the base materials. That's usually how economics and businesses work. There's a reason why Apple is one of the number one companies in the world and generates the most profits and revenues versus mining and even making the chips, those companies don't perform as well. They perform well, but not as well as Apple in terms of margins. So this company is even, frankly, I think even more insane than the Helium company. The Helium company is interesting because I imagine looking at other videos, Helium doesn't look as capital intensive to mine as compared to other things like tin, aluminum, and all the other iron ores. Because it looks like you get some gas pressure pipes in the ground and that's about it. You don't have to have these huge excavators or processing plants. You keep them in tanks and that's that. So out of this portfolio, the Helium one does look the most interesting to me. This company here though, I think is even worse than in terms of Helium one, because Helium one has a better market cap. This company is $56 million market cap, which makes me really nervous. And if you look at the revenues, it's just, this company has been losing and not even generating a single penny in revenue for years on end. And frankly, the stock price matches it. I've seen this so many times, right? So you come across this story of a company online and too many people only ever look at a chart like this. And they say, wow, this thing's blowing up. Not ever zooming out to the larger picture. And you have to wonder what happened to this company where it was something and then obviously got stuck in the pennies range for years and years and years. I think a lot of this has to do with the recent pivot to uranium. Looking for that in Canada, there's speculation that in reality, green energy never will work and that the only way forward is nuclear energy. And that's fine if you're playing this as a uranium play, a uranium explorer. But yeah, this has nasty fundamentals. Uh, this seems to be more like a hype and potential exploratory stock than one that actually is generating real value here and now. Because any company, I'm not saying this is the case with this company, this is not financial advice by the way, this is not investing advice, but any company can say, just out of hype, oh you know what, actually, um, you know, uranium is getting big right now, and actually we're looking for uranium here, we're gonna have some surveys. And that can generate millions of dollars worth of investing interest without actually really changing the company. The company can pay $20,000, $30,000 for a survey and say they're expressing intent to go look for something. When in reality, just this change in focus and attention may not be worth such a big change in the market cap of the company. So props to you for looks like playing a uranium speculation hype, but just look at the overall graph of this company. Successful companies don't look like this on their chart. I've seen this so many times in OTC penny stocks, right? Where, you know, they IPO at something, then they go down to zero and they stay there for years. And then always, 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 depending on what the latest hype the company gets into, there are spikes like this. So I'll show you an example. This isn't even remotely comparable. We're talking about two separate industries, but it's an example overall of how these penny stocks operate. So I'm not going to say which company this is, but this company has been through many, many life iterations. So, for example, once upon a time, this company was a hype medical equipment company, and then they noticed the EV electric vehicle charging craze, and they pivoted, and so there was a stock blow up in the meantime, but this stock is a nonsense penny stock that blows up from time to time when they announce a hype change in the company's focus. So, for example, this company, again, pivoted from hype medical equipment to hype electric vehicles and batteries and saw renewed investor interest, which blew up the market cap. But if you look at the chart, you see the story every single time. Now, one way to evaluate if something bad is going on, and this is what I love to do, is research the company headquarters. Going back to before, to this mysterious hype company, which blew up and then blew back down. Guess what I found out? This is the company's headquarters. So this supposedly $200 million market cap company 
has its registered office, its registered address on its SCC filings as the middle of nowhere in a residential district. Then I look up their office where they do business, and it's this. A $200 million market cap company that supposedly is the leader in batteries and electric vehicles operates out of here. So when you invest in a company like this one, I'm not saying this applies to this company. You need to do research like that. You need to be a financial stalker, frankly. And that actually leads us very nicely to the biggest loser in this subscriber's portfolio, AFMV, which actually ironically, in my opinion, outside of the Helium play, is one of the better companies in this portfolio, which is funny because it's one of the biggest losers. This is a company that focuses on tin production in the Democratic Republic of Congo, the Congo. It has the biggest market cap as far as I can see, $600 million. And guess what? It generates revenues. Yeah, it actually generates revenues as opposed to the other ones. And in 2019, it managed to turn a profit. Imagine to generate earnings. Imagine that. Now, it still suffers from the declining chart syndrome, but it does seem to benefit from a mine that came online that was started years ago that actually is starting to produce now. And this is the price of 10, the resource that the company is producing. And it seems to be benefiting from a global crunch and demand of supply for tin. As you can see here, tin is up significantly from 2020. When I first saw the chart, I assumed this company was a nonsense scam, going nowhere company. But actually, I think I was pleasantly proven wrong. So I did my usual. I dug deep into this company's filings. They're audited by PricewaterhouseCoopers. That's good. And I thought, okay, let's look at this company's office. It's in Moritz. And so you can see this company's mining operation is headquartered right here. We'll switch to the satellite view here in this development. And I thought, okay, what's going on here? And so first I was really skeptical. This is the biggest loser in the subscribers portfolio. I was thinking, what is going on here? Is this a tourist district? This picture is from 2018. Like there's supposedly a massive mining operation going on here. Nando's, I like that. Like, what are these? Those look like apartments. This can't be right. A $600 million company is located here? So I did even more digging, and the company is located in Peary Office Suites Limited. And yeah, the office suites are on the relatively small size, but this isn't a virtual office. It appears to be a real office space that you can rent. And for what it's worth too, actually, I was working to start up a uh, company myself here, and I wanted to rent some office space. And a lot of smaller companies do do this. In fact, again, I was looking to doing the same thing. Usually the rent, depending on what country you're operating out of, or what kind of building you're getting, could be anywhere from about $1,000 a month to ten dollars to $20,000 a month, depending on your space. So this is completely legitimate. And you can even see, again, right there, look out the window. Those are the apartments. So that was actually heartening. I tracked down an interview with the former CEO, and he seems to specialize, just based on the interview I saw, starting up mining companies and actually finding, exploring, and getting mines open, but they recently transitioned CEOs to someone who has more experience with mining operations after the mine has been established. So credit where it's due. The original CEO, it's not like he ran away from the company, he's still on the executive board. They got a new CEO that specializes in the new production. And overall seems like a good company. Actually, ironically, I was expecting his worst performer, right? So he's down only taking a position in the stock recently. He's down 13% in this company. But overall, for a foreign Canadian company, I've seen worse. I mean, yeah, so I, I dug deeper into this company. It used to specialize in gold, which obviously did not do well for them. But when they focused on tin, I have to admit, getting a tin mine started up has done very well for them. I think a lot of it does have to do with the fact that They've benefited a lot from the surge in tin price now after the pandemic. And you do have to be a little bit careful because tin's all-time high price, you can see here, is only in the 30k range and it's almost there already. So you can see a kind of natural barrier. Tin's price does fluctuate a lot and you see opportunities, buying opportunities that happen every few years. You can kind of get the natural sense of tin's price. So I don't know how much more tin's price has to run after this point, but it does seem like a solid investment. One thing that got me really nervous though, when I dug into the company's financials, because the reality is, after decades of struggling, there's going to be some black scars in the financials of any company that goes through that. And I found something that wasn't good. So I was looking at this and I was shocked that they managed to generate $187 million in revenue. I thought, that's great. Whoa, this thing's going to blow up. Going from no revenue to now $180 million and they just started their mine. 
but I was looking too and I was thinking, how did they squander $180 million worth of revenue and only clock out at a loss of $8 million? So I had to dig into their financial reports. For those of you who don't know, again, I have a background in finance and accounting. So I'm able to read these things. So that took me, of course, to the profit and loss statement for this company. In 2020, yeah, it's true. They generated $187 million in revenue. But they had a high cost of sales, which is fine. Again, starting at mining operations, especially when it's not helium, is expensive. I was expecting that. But you can see the revenue just get whittled down more and more and more, right? So they had a small revenue ending in 2019. Cost of sales exploded in the meantime, mostly in line with the revenue. They still had a sizable gross profit, though. We're talking $42 million, which is good. That outstrips anything, any of the previous losses from previous years. We're talking $2 million lost, $1 million lost. It seems like this is a good track. Administrative costs, this is good. This is keeping in line. So it looks like they weren't, you know, paying out bonuses or deciding they're going to upgrade their offices and spend a bunch of money in the company. This is good that they're keeping this in line, that their general and administrative expenses aren't scaling with the revenue. Again, we're still talking about, after all, there's still $25 million in the clear, which is good. But then I encountered an anomaly. There's a $15 million incurrence charge in finance cost. So this right here, between the warrants to stockholders, loss on foreign exchange currency, which is normal, and finance cost, which is abnormally large, it put this company into the loss zone. $50 million, this is actually the third largest item on this profit and loss statement, right? So the largest is the cost of sales, second is the general administrative expense, then third is the finance cost. And I was thinking, what is going on here? Because this finance cost, if you're looking at that at an overall net loss of $7.8 million, this finance cost is the difference between profitability and a loss, really, that and also the deferred tax movement. So I had to see what's going on. So here's what it says further down in the report. Finance cost, of $875,000, of which primarily related to the amortization of historic debt fees and trader finance costs, were previously included in general administrative expenses, are now disclosed as finance costs in Note 25. And look what's happening in Note 25. They got hit with debt interest, $10 million, along with debt restructuring and other interest. So between adding all this $15 million in debt, obviously incurred from previous operations, this is hard, this hurts. And if it continues, it's really going to seriously hurt profitability. But the good news is, it seems like for the time being, with the new price of 10, they're generating the profit and loss to hopefully cover this if they can pay that debt down, which is good. But before going even further into this company, I would recommend keeping a hard eye on that debt. That's one of the only blemishes on this report. Other than that, I haven't found anybody talking up hype on this company online. I haven't seen any evidence of pump and dump schemes going on. You know, for a biggest loser, I've seen a lot worse, so congratulations to you on that one. So then rapid firing down this list, RHC.V, that's Royal Helium, that's another helium company, really tiny market cap, kind of makes me nervous, it's also suffering from bad chart syndrome. Uh, it's just losing money, it's not generating revenue. Now this is obviously extremely early stage, they're still exploring for helium. Just keep in mind, this thing's risky, man. I appreciate you sending this in. I like you more than boring ETF investors, but this is, yeah, this is a little crazy, man. You, uh, I admire your strategy. That's obviously the 130% gain. Then rounding this up really quick, we've got Metals Limited. Declining revenues. Produces tin, copper, and again, another commodities mining operation. Pure Point Uranium Group. Also got bad chart syndrome. Nasty, <laughs> nasty revenue and earnings, still not turning a profit. This is Uranium Explorer, that's interesting. Then finally, Arc Minerals Limited. Also having bad chart syndrome. Exploring for copper in Africa. Along with Cobalt. So now, what do I think about this portfolio? I think anybody who values diversification will have a heart attack looking at it, number one. Number two, though, I have to praise it. This is a concentrated, dedicated strategy, and that's learning a specific sector. This is something I talk about on my channel a lot, right? So this subscriber has seriously invested time into learning exploratory mining operations, niche sectors, and niche commodities and minerals. And it seems to be working. 
for me, that strategy is going into pre-commercial biotech companies, specifically focusing on cell therapy and gene therapy. And that's worked for me. I like concentrated sector investing. Now, me personally, I have a rule where I don't go micro cap. I don't go OTC stocks, except if they're foreign. I don't mind foreign OTC stocks. I just don't like OTC stocks in general because, you know, if a company's really got potential, they actually prefer to remain private. If a company does truly have potential, they have no problem raising capital from banks, private investors, or something like that. There's no reason to IPO on the OTC stock exchange unless you're a foreign company that has different reporting requirements. So thinking about this portfolio is like looking at when you're driving down the highway, and you see a car fly by you, it's like a sports car, right? Here you are driving your whatever, your Prius or your Avante. And you're thinking, I could never drive like that. There's no way I could handle it. But for whatever reason, it seems to be working for that person. They haven't died yet. And uh, they're getting to that destination faster. So that's what I like in you two. I hope you don't get pulled over. I think you've got a high performance vehicle that can get you through these twists and turns in the road and get you in and out of traffic. But this is really incredible. I don't think myself or anyone on this channel has ever seen a portfolio like this. Market caps that are at the best 600 million, but in reality below 100 million more often than not, the lowest of which $32 million market cap company is concentrated and non-diversified. This portfolio is so risky that Yahoo Finance doesn't even know what to say about it. They just say the risk information is completely unavailable. So in a way, this portfolio is the final net product of what I advocate on this channel. You learn a niche sector, you learn a specific way of investing, in my case, gene therapy, pre-commercial, when obviously biotech stocks or those gene therapies are still going through clinical trials, they're not yet proven. You learn that area, get a sense to pick out what's gonna be a winner and what's gonna be a loser. And in this case, it's mining exploration. If you've learned that and you've figured out which companies and which management teams can execute and find these materials and find these minerals or find helium in your case, that's great. I would continue it because, you know, my opinion is you're not going to get rich with Vanguard index funds of the S&P 500. You're not. That's for when you're already rich. So congratulations to you, subscriber, for acting like a private equity sponsor, finding these early stage companies, getting in on the ground floor, finding them, doing the research. The only thing I would consider is possibly adding a source of silicon or aluminum. If you want to learn about that, that might be a good way to expand your horizons. But props to you. This is actually the perfect example of what I advocate on my channel. So I want to thank this subscriber for putting themselves out there, sharing their portfolio with the world so that you can learn and you can see what other people are doing and adapt it and learn from it and incorporate these things into your investing strategies. Huge thanks goes to the subscriber. You know who you are. If you want to support this series, I've already gotten a few emails and interest in it, which is great. But if you want to support this series, I'm asking you, send in a screenshot of your portfolio. I'll reconstruct it on Yahoo Finance, strip away all the personal information. No one will know who you are. And you'll get my feedback and my commentary on your stock picks. If you want to get started investing, there's a link down in the description to M1 Finance. You deposit $100, you get $30. That's an instant 30% gain. I get $30, helps out the channel. That's all for now, and I'll check you out in the next video and in the next portfolio review.